That's right. We're back, motherfuckers. Hell yeah. We're back. Took a little break. We were on the fucking seek one. Yeah, we were we were off hella broken windows. <laughs> Bird got to me. I'm a witness. <laughs> <laughs> we're the test dummies for the plan C pill, so that's not we were Yeah, we're all we're, we're all currently on male birth control, so <laughs> the hormones are but now, welcome back to another El Barrio Podcast. It's your boy, Monta Media. Compastui. Eddie Chapo. And today, we got a very, very special guest. It was very anticipated. I'm finally glad we're doing it after months and months of talking about it. For real. We got the Compa GB. What's going on with you? Saludos. Appreciate the hospitality. Appreciate the DJ shot. Yes, sir. <laughs> sir you already know we had to. Anybody we're, who knows me know I stay with some DJ. And we always stay on with that DJ on set, bro. Like, uh... At least, at least three, four bottles get killed every video shoot. Oh shit! That's every my video, type of video. Every shoot. video, like, uh-huh. like, I know. Last time we had this whole <coughs> bent, this was. I was like, I already <laughs> took a shot. I need another one. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's shit, no yeah, that was about right. <laughs> How you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling uh, busy. Mm-hmm. Busy. busy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's always good to be busy. Yeah. So. yeah. What you what you been doing? I see you've been traveling. I know we just came back from L.A. and uh, yeah. shot a movie, but, but, and you did some some interviews and stuff. What else you been up to? That's that's really been it. Just you know, trying to keep it consistent with the videos. Uh, we got an album drop in the end of this month. We have. Uh, I got my own my first uh, business opening up this month. It's a Man. it's my first uh, brick and mortar. It's, it's a sneaker and retail shop there in Merced. So I've been busy with that. Whenever I'm not busy with the music shit, oh. I've been in and out of there trying to get everything situated, um, and you know, just anticipating that opening up. And uh, so hopefully, it's one of many more. Hell yeah, man! That, that's dope. Uh, is that is that gonna be one of one of the like the main uh, first first type of shoe store like that in in, in Merced or in, in the area? Yeah, because we have a mall that's under construction. It's been under construction for like probably two years, if not more. And they had the foot lockers, the foot actions, whatever, mm. but they shut it all down because they're adding another story onto it. Oh, yeah. So there's only, like, maybe, like, three stores open in there. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's still open, but everything's shut down, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as far as, like, we trying to carry, like, retro Jordans, uh, Yeezys, shit like that, whatever's in style, that, shit that's kind of what's going on, you feel me, in, like, the high schools and all the other stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. So... I mean, the the thing that's so special about it to me is that, is that it's in my hood, in my neighborhood. So there's a lot of businesses there, all types of businesses. But everybody that's been there has been there since, like, the 90s. You feel me? Like, it's been the same consistent mm-hmm. business owners, which have seen people like me and, like, the people I'd be around. They've seen us grow, come and go, and it's always been the same one. So for me to kind of be on the same line as them, like, in the same type of business with them now, like we're neighbors and now we're like business partners instead of them just kind of watching us run up and down the block, running yeah, from yeah, cops yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a huge milestone for us, and uh, it's it's something that I'm proud of, just on that, you know, point of view. You know what oh, I mean, yeah. well, what made you want to do that? <laughs> <clears throat> well, first, I like to do a lot of giving back in my city. Like that's that's something that I'm really known for, mm. whether it be to the kids, to the homeless people, or to just the community in general. That's something that I'm, I'm really known for. So at first, I kind of had the idea. I heard there was like a building opening up. Mm-hmm. So I had the idea of kind of making like a, like a, how do I say it? Like a non-profitable uh, like community center for the kids to go after school, have like games in there, like have tutors to help them with their homework and shit like that to keep them off the streets. But, uh, Unfortunately, that uh, that building that we got, it wasn't big enough. So I was like, <laughs> what could we do instead of that? You feel me? So I was like, maybe, you know, like a, like a uh, one of my boys over at uh, the Come Up Kicks, he has his own shop in Madeira. Yeah. He just kind of threw it out there like, man, you should just open up a shoe shop. So I was thinking about it and, I, and it just, it just kind of happened from one day to the next. Excuse me. I was like, fuck it. Because I have a pretty big collection myself, so... Mm. I was like, man, I could just probably throw like a lot of them joints in there, throw them in there, and and it just kind of happened from one day to the next. I was like, as soon as I signed that 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 paper, I was like, there's no kind of no turning back from there. Yeah. 
but most importantly to me is just that, that spot too. Um, maybe within this the next year or so, I can move to a bigger location and turn that one into something else. I don't know, maybe like a barber shop or something we don't have in the hood yet. Mm. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at with it right now. Ms. Dunn, do you feel like being a, a successful artist helped do that for you and give back to the community? It definitely put. Uh, it definitely set me with the with the with the with like uh, the best platform I could get, mm-hmm. you know, because I got a lot of youth following mm-hmm. me, and uh, you know, once you once you start building a name for yourself, everybody just kind of wants to be a part of, you know, some point in your life. You feel me? So it, it helps me with the promoting and the marketing and stuff like that. And at the same time, it's just that's just something that I'm a big believer about is just giving back in order to receive. So it just always feels good to see like the kids walk away happy with something, mm-hmm. and then whenever you feel me, I get something back. I get something back. You know? yeah, that's dope because a lot of people once they start getting that little success, they just start mm-hmm. fucking off their money on, mm-hmm. on you know stuff that they really don't need instead of like trying to invest right. it and get a little stuff and you know right. get back yeah, to the so that's, that's pretty dope to see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. yeah, off top. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's dope. How like Mercedes like. Well, I come from, like, a small neighborhood too, Pittsburgh, you know what I'm saying? And, like, Merced ain't too big either, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And not a lot of people that come out of Merced, you know what I'm saying? So, right. like, that's dope as fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're taking your platform. And I, I'm pretty sure, like, most people in your neighborhood, they see you as, like, that person that's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? He's from Merced. If he did it, I can do it too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, like, like, that's what I get a lot from, like, people, like, even in my area where they're like, damn, bro, you're, you're a director and you're successful from Pittsburgh. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, yeah, bro, I mean, it's just, like, just, just straight grinding it out. Yeah, you feel yeah. like do you feel like that kind of plays a little bit more part where it's like you come from a small town and it just makes you go a little harder? Yeah, I'll talk. So Merced, Merced's you know a little town in the valley. Mm-hmm. Um, not too much people have heard about it, and right. if you have, it's just you haven't heard much coming out it's of it. Passing through type yeah, of thing. Huh? We don't got a lot of talent pumping out of there, nothing like that. And even then, when some people do, they usually you know start claiming another city. You feel me? That's bigger, like the next biggest city next to them. You feel me? All right. Um, but that's that's never been me. I've always like you know I don't give a fuck how small it is or whatever. Like that's my home. That's where I came from. So that's that's a big important part in in, in anybody's career is not to not to forget where they came from. You know. Facts. Facts. Mm-hmm. How, how's Merced is like? How's the the lifestyle and everything out there? Well, I'm pretty sure it's 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 uh, similar to a lot of other small towns, but uh, it depends what generation you grew up in. You know, like '90s and early 2000s. Even like up until I would say maybe 2014, 2015, like it's it's like a gang infested town if you're if you're on the west side of town or in certain areas of the town. Um, there's a lot of gang violence for sure, um, and it all just depends on around who you hang around with. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Some people chose that life, some people didn't. Uh, but I would just say you know it's it's, it's cool. I like it. You know what I mean? Um, Despite all the bullshit that happens in the city, um, I, I I find a lot of stuff to do there. Other people are like, "What's there to do out there?" <laughs> you feel me? There's like, uh, there's a lot of shit. I'm I'm a real summer person. I like getting in the water, lakes, uh, rivers. Yeah, there's barbecues. a lot of that out there. Huh? Yeah, there's a lot of that there's a lot of rivers out there. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, surrounding it. You know what I mean, so we don't got to drive too far. Yeah. Right. Um, even the community itself survive. You go to the park. There's people shooting dice, people playing cards, people, you know, there's money on the block. Hmm. If you know how to get money, you go to the block and you, you make ends meet. Um, there's enough shit to keep you busy, but as far as, like, entertainment, like, L.A. or the Bay and shit like that, no, we don't got that there, but... Yeah, yeah. You feel me? There's enough for you to keep busy out there if you know how to get for it. sure. How does the, the police treat you that it's a so small city <laughs> and then you're... So popular and pretty much like I'm pretty sure a small city most people know you, <coughs> so I'm pretty sure the police is just like on your ass. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> well, at first in the beginning of my career, when I was barely starting, it wasn't something that they were used to. They were like, "What GD? You know, he's doing these videos in in his hood." Uh, they were on my ass at first. They were, you could tell they were, you know, they were keeping up with me, trying to do anything they can to like put a cease to it. But uh, uh, Moda and fucking uh, Eddie been there where we shot another one. Like, the police was right there. Like, oh, yeah, they could see like, us. It's like, it's like, the, uh, the cars are literally parked, like, yeah, next. Like the literally station. right behind it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, where we were doing the group scene, like, they were just all behind us type shit. Yeah. So that's how it is. But after they started seeing, you know, like, the movement, what I was doing, 
the give backs. Uh, they just, I don't know, to me, the, the transition that I seen, they just kind of started respecting it. It was like, oh, that's just GB doing his thing. Oh. You know, just leave him alone. And that's that's just what I've been seeing lately. Kind of like, at first it was fucking with me tough. But after a while, they just kind of let me be me. Yeah, that's dope. Because I remember when we went, we <laughs> shot that video. A couple, couple <clears throat> rollers pulled up. And, yeah, they you know, pulled up. Yeah. I, I remember this fool was like, hey, go with him, bro. Go with him. Let's go with him just in case he tried to bother and, like, and stop <laughs> oh, the yeah. whole thing. And then I was like, yeah, yeah you're right. And I started walking towards you because you were already walking towards the cops. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, fuck, let me let me see if I could try to intervene because I'm the cameraman and try to, you know, tell him to calm down or something. Yeah. And this fool had it all locked in. He was like, it's yeah. all locked. It was all good. It was all left from, from, the, yeah. get, you know, from the get-go. That's, that's a cool part, that too. Dope. That's a cool part about being, like, actually from from your from your community is that right. you, I'm not going to say you have say-so, but you got somewhat respect from everybody, whether it be, like, the police or the business owners or the residents or even the homeless people. Like everybody respects you on all levels and you give the same respect back, you know, like sure. I'm just here working. Uh, I'm just here, you know, doing my thing. And, and that's just how it's been for me, you know, not to fuck off, you know, any type of some shit with anybody, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just coming up in there. Uh, what, what was kind of, what, 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 what's like your best memory from, from, from coming up in uh, Merced? One of the, one of the, one of them. Uh, I know there's a lot. But. Shit, just growing up, your entire your entire childhood, kind of like just all the memories you share. You know, you drive down the, in and out of the town, around the town, and, you know, like you might have done something in that a specific corner, and you're always going to remember that when you see that corner. Yeah, yeah. Or you drive by a certain house that you grew up going to your whole life, and let's say that person no longer lives there, you're still going to be able to remember, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. all the shit we used to do in that front yard or in the house. I think that's just what, what makes your hometown so special, that you could you always got those memories, and then you could always talk about them afterwards, like, we did this, we did that. Um, yeah, that's really it, just growing up from Merced. Hell yeah. Made hella memories for sure. That's dope. And what kind of inspired you to start <coughs> doing music since you were, like, in a small city like Merced? Well, like I was telling Moda earlier... <laughs> Uh, my mom was listening to the Biggie album, Ready to Die, when she was giving birth to me. I thought you were being sarcastic. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm Once like, track three hit, it was Once over. track three hit, I was oh, like halfway man. through. I'm just saying. <laughs> Shit, as far as I can remember, as far as I can remember, I can recollect my memory to about four years old. And ever since I can remember, I've just always been into rap and hip-hop, like the Bone Thugs, the Tupacs, the Death Rose, uh, the NWAs, like old school West Coast rap. Uh i just always been like, I don't know, something just sparked in my brain when I heard the music. And uh, just my whole life, I was kind of like, you know, it'd be dope if I could rap, but I don't know if I could rap. I never, I didn't know how to how to try it. And Merced's a small town, we didn't have like studios, or I didn't have that uncle that rapped, I didn't have that older homie from my hood that rapped before me. So it was just kind of all on me. So later on in life, I just, you know, I started... Uh, I actually started with like a little MP3 player. Um, there was this, uh, I came home one day, it was probably like sunset. And at the time I would walk around cause I'm the youngest of eight. I come from a big family. Oh damn. Yeah. So like at the time there was like a lot of people at my house. So they, I noticed it was like nobody there. So I started looking in and out of the rooms, like kind of like who's here, you know? And uh, there was nobody home. So I seen a little circle, like a black circle kind of device on the bed and I picked it up and uh, I think the first iPod might have been out at this time but yeah. I was too broke to afford it you know Yeah. so we had a it was an mp3 player so I started tweaking on it and then uh, when I was on it I found this little thing that a little hole in, in the front and it said MIC so I was like man the only thing I could think of is like microphone so I started going through the settings and then I found a, a, it said record. So I pushed it and I was like, yo, 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 you know, I was just talking into a little hole and I played it back and I heard my voice. I was like, oh shit. Like that's the closest I've ever been to any type of studio or so. Cause we didn't yeah. have shit like this growing up, you know? So I was like, this is crazy. So I fucking, I kind of turned around and I see my sister. I told my sister, who's is this? She's like, it's your brother Omar's. 
So I went to Omar's room. I fucking opened the door. I was like, this yours? He's like, yeah. I was like, how much you want for it? Hmm. He's like, give me like 20 bucks. I, like, Poo, I pulled out 20 bucks, gave it to him. <laughs> I, went, I ran in the room, and I, I didn't know how to write music, you yeah. know? I just started writing, just writing in a notebook. And then I had this old school uh, song by the game. He had a, a mixtape with JT, the bigger figure at the time. And he had a song, I forgot what it was called, but after he rapped half the beat, the other half kept playing just the beat. So I played it in the background, and I was just kind of like held the mic kind of close to the speaker. <laughs> and I just <laughs> ran it through until he got done rapping, and I started rapping after him. So it sounded legit to me. I didn't know enough about mixing and mastering. Or it sounded like you were a feature on it. It sounded like I was a feature. <laughs> so I was like probably like 16 years old, maybe <clears throat> rough around there. I was sometime in high school. So I went to school the next day and I told my boys, I was like, I, I did a song with the game yesterday and he was popping at the time. They're like, no way. So I showed them, you feel me? And they were like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I ended up telling them like it was, you know how I did it, but that's kind of what sparked yeah. The initiation after that, I was just writing raps in class, in detention, and anytime I could, I would just, you know, kind of do that's what kind of started it. Yeah, but I didn't actually start rapping until I got out of prison this last time, which was um, 16, right? 2018. Oh, 18? Yeah, because yeah, I, 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 I think I saw something about um, you started <laughs> rapping, but you didn't know nothing of it. You didn't know anything yeah. about studios or. or, mm -hmm. or, or Royalties or anything, but yeah, no, you, nothing. You, you bumped into someone in, 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 while you were in with from mindless behavior. From mindless behavior, yeah. Shout out uh, Santo August. That's that's, that's crazy, bro. Right that's crazy. And then he 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 taught you the game, and he well, he didn't teach skill. you the game, but he he like you know he he gave you the rundown. <clears throat> yeah, he and, and explained to me how it all worked. Um, uh, once you once well, you got out, I know I saw the I saw the beer and all the shots the right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, after you got out, you just. What, what what you obviously got that information and just ran with it right and you just you just started. Nah, well he kind of broke you he kind of broke down what it was because I was like how do you get paid for it because I was intrigued by it and uh he would and he let me borrow a book called the the history uh something about like the history of hip-hop by Dan Carnes it's a good ass book too and I read it and it kind of broke down a little bit of the history of hip-hop and how the business worked and the type of deals they give so I'm like a big believer that everything happens for a reason. So when I was locked up, I was like, I can't find no reason why I'm in here. So I kind of just summed it down to like, fuck it. I, until I find that purpose, I'm just going to write music in here and rap. And then after a while, I was like, oh, shit, that's probably what it is. Like, tell yeah, me, like, you need to rap. I have to write you pages and pages. Huh? I was like, shit. maybe you just need to rap. So yeah. when I got out, I told my PO, I was like, hey, look, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make music. And he's like, oh, yeah, I read here in your paperwork that you're a local rapper. <laughs> And, um, you weren't fucking with it, huh? Yeah, I was like, he was just like, nah, like you can't basically, it's fucking considered gang related and all this other bullshit. So, I like, while I was waiting for me to get off probation, which is about a year wait, um, I was just Googling uh, and YouTubing proper way to release music, uh, the music rights, um, what is the step by step tutorial to putting a song on YouTube. Um, I didn't even know about exclusive rights to beats, mixing, mastering. Um, I didn't know shit, you know. And then once I kind of got the okay to, to like that, I was off probation. Then that's when I started dropping. That's when I dropped my first, uh, like my mixtape. And what, what what year was that? That was 2018. 2018. Yeah. So, so was that like a couple months? A couple couple months after you got released. That was exactly a year after. A I got year. Released. A year yeah, after yeah. you got released. Yeah, I had to wait a year to get off probation. Last year. I get I have, I had to give them like random, a uh, clean, you know, drug test. I had to attend classes after work. I was working at the time. Um, it was just I was just on a leash on a short leash, and they would just hit my house like two three times a week, just to try to catch me slipping or something, you know. Um, and it was just a year of that straight, yeah. and um, yeah, I finally got off the papers. So, <clears throat> how long did it take you to get your like your first like? Popping that song, like not popping, but like you know, your first sing single that was like you know you were proud of. Because I feel like I've seen you doing your thing for like you know quite a yeah. while now, and then you know, yeah. Uh, I think you, the first you were one popping in in in, in Mercedes. Yeah. Yeah. I was already yeah. popping yeah. in Mercedes yeah. yeah. before I started moving <clears throat> around. So I think the the first one that actually took off was a song called Intro. 
Uh, mm-hmm. That's the one that took off for me. That uh, just almost immediately after I got off probation, I recorded that. It was shot by Admirer. Even Admirer was it, that's that was my personal director at the time. He didn't even know what he was doing at the time either too well like he does now. Like now he goes crazy with it. And um, his camera fucked up on him right before the shoot, so he had to borrow a random camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, his stabilizer yeah. went out, so he had to do the handheld. Yeah. And it was just, uh, yeah, it was just awful. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it took off. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's when Thizzler reached out. And it kind of started getting me more exposure throughout Northern California. So they, they swooped you right up because I remember that. And I would always see your face on Thizzler. They were like... Giving you that yeah, push, was, for real. Yeah, yeah, they fuck with me heavy. <clears throat> no, it wasn't, it, I think it wasn't until 19 or something when they had the ciphers. One. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. the first I, cypher. I, I yeah, personally yeah. met you. I was like. Okay. Cause, oh, yeah, you were shooting for Bean. Yeah, I was, yeah actually, yeah. I was shooting for. Matt invited me to the cypher, but I was doing, like, BTS for Bean's video that day. I, and I hero. met you. Yeah, yeah. And, and Let me say uh, No, I said no kind of masses, but I'm trying to move there. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I, fuck and, with uh, I remember everyone was just like, huh, "It's full, it's full one in." <laughs> yeah, he can I remember that. Everyone, was <clears throat> I felt like I was like an underdog. I still feel kind of like, still kind of feel like that. But I had a lot to prove at the beginning. Yeah, like he, he Mexican, he fucking, uh, you know, only not black dude in the building. Yeah, and, uh, and, and you were the only one that uh, like everyone else knew each other. I guess because they yeah, were just yeah. from different areas of San Francisco, yeah. right? And then just here's GB, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I saw him. I just I don't know him too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, he, then, you know, one person came up, second person came up, third person came up, fourth person, GB. We're like, yeah. Oh, what the yeah. fuck? I remember I everyone was just like, hey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was dope. That was lit. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that too, and that hella caught my attention because, like you said, you were like the first Mexican, like they're really getting pushed by Thizz or almost, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, damn, that's crazy, bro. And then I seen the, I seen the cipher. I'm like, damn, he's going in, bro. Like, and he's like rapping, rapping. Like, you know what rapping, I'm saying? Rapping, like, rapping, like, I was like, damn, bro, that's crazy. I, I was, I was really like, it was like, I ain't gonna lie, it was like a moment where it's like, you know, you got that last pride, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, like, yeah, for, for sure, sure. For sure. After that, yeah, I just had to keep it pushing, like. Like, fuck that, you feel me? Like, as far as Mexican shit, you know what I mean? Like, the following cypher, I wore, like, <laughs> the old Mexican flag on my hoodie. And yeah. Shit. It was, yeah, I was just like, I just And got you to. came in like, I'm feeling like the Mexican pie. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah, for real. I was like, I, I, I got I to gotta kick that door down that they don't want to let me in type shit. Oh, yeah. And that's true. Uh, if you ain't black in this music industry, you're going to have a hard time. You got to prove a yourself. Or harder time. Yeah, sure. you got to really prove to these uh, you know, to the black people, that yeah, it's their sport. You mm-hmm. think? But we we could we could do it too. You know what I mean? And, exactly. And it's all love. You know, as far as black and brown, like I fuck with everybody. Hell yeah! Of course. So, Hell yeah! Uh, kind of piggybacking on what you were just saying, like about like like your music and like like uh, the way you rap and stuff like that. What were some of your influences uh, when you started doing music? Like, who was kind of like somebody that you really looked up to? Well, I I know I, I don't just listen to rap and hip hop, right? For sure. But even then, like. I've listened to so much music, both Spanish, uh, hip hop, um, all type of genres to where I'm able to distinguish like a good song from a bad song. You know what I'm saying? Even if that ain't the genre I listen to, I'm like, man, this shit kind of, it's corny. You feel me? Like, I don't want to slap this shit. So just like, I've always been into lyricism. You feel me? So Eminem's like a big person that I look up to when it came, when it came to like lyricism. I'm the game, Tupac, Biggie. Jay Z, Lil Wayne, uh, all uh, just all type of people. I've I've had my little phases in and out. Um, Ti, you feel me? Uh, e forty, Mac Dre, just everywhere. I'm all over with it. Sure. So, mm-hmm. Let's take it back a little bit. How long were you in prison for? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, incarcerated as an adult. I've done like four and a half years mm. total, but like in and out. Like I'll do two years here, a year and a half here. Six months here, six months there. Like I just been in and out since I was eighteen. Yeah, uh, yeah. and and being in there, what do you feel like? <clears throat> it how did it change your mentality? Like, did it make you mature more? You were just like, ah, fuck it, I ain't coming back. Or what was your whole mentality in there? It for sure made me respect my mom's more, for, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Cause the discipline. Yeah, because she was she was in my ear like my whole life. Like, what are you doing? Getting kicked out of school, suspended. 
Uh, just being in the streets all day. Like, what are you, what are you doing with yourself? Like, she, you know, she just wants the best for you. But at the time, you think that they're just on your helmet. So I was fresh out of, um, I was, I had just graduated high school, and I went to college. I signed up for college, keeping a honey. I did it for the financial aid, right? <laughs> we all did. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but check it out. I didn't even get it. So uh, yeah, I was scheme. like, what? I was like, you guys get two bands. <laughs> what? I want two bands. I'm, for real. I'll fuck that off right now. <laughs> so. I signed up for it. I was there probably about three to four weeks at the most, and I got locked up. I got caught for a gun case and a like a stolen car or some shit like that. And uh, yeah, I went. I went to the pen, and I, uh, I was used to like the whole like juvenile hall time type shit. But when you get like with the with the big dogs with the big boys, you feel me? Uh, it's a whole different ball game. You know what I mean? So. You, uh, it just, it was just a lot of discipline, you know. Uh, I was fortunate enough to do time with a lot of older cats, mm -hmm. so me being eighteen, fresh out of high school, I was, I still had a kind, of, like, I like to cat it out a little bit, you know what I mean? Even in like my video shoots, I like to fuck around. Ooh, ooh, but a lot of them aren't used to that because they've mm -hmm. done like ten plus years, so they're like, you can't fucking smile around me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, so it was just like a lot of discipline. I had to like really just shut the fuck up and listen. So that's what time was like for me, you know? And um, when I got out, I was just kind of like, okay, I see where you were coming from to my mom's. So it definitely, you know, on both ends, you know, built our respect levels for one another. Um, I remember I couldn't find a job as an adult. I think I was probably like 19. I was like 19 or something like that, 20. I couldn't find a job because of my criminal background. So I started going to the fields with one of my boys. That shit was like modern day slavery. I was like, fuck. That shit made me like find out the, the, the meaning of a dollar. You feel me? Yeah. You picking shit, throwing it in buckets, and they're going to be 25 cents a bucket. So you're just like, damn, I really got to, you know, instead of that fast money type shit, I was like, man, it just, it just, it just made me much more humble, mm. I think. Like, uh, on, on all levels, for sure. Yeah, it's dope. That's how it affected me. Yeah, that's cool. Because you could tell sometimes when people, <laughs> you know, they get a lot from, you know, being in jail or prison or whatever. Like the discipline, the maturity, and, you know, you know all that. Yeah. So that's good uh, that you get to work on yourself while you're in there, too. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, you know, you, you, you get to reflect and fix whatever the fuck you feel me wrong with you. But even on the music tip, because there's a lot of rappers that, they rap like on a clean ass beat or they got like a catchy hook or whatever the case. But when it come down to talking to these OGs that really want to hear about something, no, it's like, they're like, oh, you rap, let me hear some. And then you kind of hear somebody not talking about nothing. Um, you're, they're just like, what the fuck is that? You know, <laughs> like you don't got to beat no more. You either got to make it or you got to really spit some real life shit yeah. that these fucking killers can relate to or, this lifer could relate to or this real gangster could relate to. And then that's when, that's I think that helped me with sharpening my skills a lot too because I'm like, I really got to say something. Mm -hmm. I really need these motherfuckers to feel me on this. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think my shit got a lot more meaning than the average rapper. It do because oh. I, I, I remember uh, listening to, uh, dang, don't hit me if I get it wrong, but I think gang members. <laughs> <laughs> I already uh, yeah, yeah, gang members. That shit was for the hard. homies, for sure. That shit was hard, like, yeah. and then the 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 when there's a certain lines that you say that actually mean meant like mm -hmm. real shit and come to look at it. I saw it like in an interview as well when you brought it up too. That's like some powerful ass words in that. Yeah, know? there's a um, lot of uh, one eighty six point two. That's like one of my favorite albums. Uh, one eighty six point twenty two is the penal code for the uh, for the state of California for a gang enhancement. Mm. So any gang member who ever had caught a gang charge, they got that 186.22 charge in their paperwork. So in that album, I just kind of like um, explained the cycle of a gang member's life from A to Z and uh, from the first to the last song. So that's like one of one of the phases we go through. We go we lose a lot of homies um, due to like, you know, the system or, or being killed. So that, that was like a special song to me for sure, too. Man. Um. With all this experience and all this all this game that you absorbed uh, growing up and stuff, like you got anything to say to any 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 new new coming homies trying to trying to trying to make a name for themselves? Like to the youth, 
just uh, just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Just be yourself. Pursue what you want to pursue. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that the gang shit is is something you do want to pursue because because it, it ain't nothing pretty in that shit. Uh, but that's what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted like I want to go to prison. I want to be like. Involved, because that's, that's all we looked up to, you know what I mean? That was our older homies, and, and that's what they taught us to do. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't the prettiest shit, but fortunately, thank God, I'm, I'm one of the ones that's still here, you feel me, to hopefully tell the, to you that, you know, that ain't really the route you want to take. But uh, if I would have had somebody backing me up to support my music, like, you know, here's $100 for studio time, or here's a beat, let me buy you a beat. Or this is how you do it, or let me help you. My life would have probably been a little different, but instead I was taught more like we we needed to do this tonight. We got to do this right now. So I'm just like, damn, like I'll get to the music when I can. So if you got somebody in your ear like that, you know, just you know take advantage of that shit, cause uh, you know whatever it may be. You know what I mean, just don't let nobody tell you you can't do it, cause you know I'm living proof that a lot of people told me I couldn't. The system. Um, you know, even like my family was more like, "What are you doing? Get go get a job." You know, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. and I just seen some shit by uh, I think it was somebody by the Black Eyed Peas when his mom was like, "When are you gonna get a good real job?" And that was like, "I do got a real job. I, I'm just not getting paid for it yet." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's just true. You just keep grinding till the money come in, cause that shit that shit'll pay off. Work ethic pays off for sure. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. So just keep going. <laughs> Hell yeah! Because I know I think everybody here on this table remembers that day where that 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 job that your mom and dad told you. What's the to what's the uh, what's the last job each of you guys had? Like that last nine to five, you guys were on payroll for. I was a server at a restaurant. At a restaurant, okay. Damn near a slave, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and, and what was what was it like when you quit your job? Like what was that moment? I was hella juice, bro, because it was at the point, luckily, thank God, that I was doing decent in the video stuff, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So it was cool, because when I quit, I was like, you know what? I'm out of here, bro. I don't got to yeah, deal with this right. shit no more. And I, But I worked for it, you know what I'm saying? So right, like, right, right. I'll talk. It was, there were so many days where, you know, you want to quit and you can't. You can't. I worked I worked three jobs at one point, you know what I'm saying? Three, like three server that. jobs. And I worked, I worked a five-hour shift in the morning, four-hour shift at night. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Fuck mm. that. Okay, what about uh, you, Steve? I used to work at a hospital. Uh, ultimate. Oh, and I used to get paid cool. I used to pay up at like twenty eight an hour. Oh shit! So I was making some cool money, Damn. but I was up, like, nah, I was ready to go ahead first in it, so yeah. I just ended up just quitting. And I seen him from a long time ago. That's something like it's crazy because a lot of people that me and admire because I didn't know what admire since we were young. A lot of people that me and admire would look up to, like admire was with the film. He never knew what the fuck he was doing or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would be like, "Nigga, Stewie's that guy." <laughs> Stewie, Stewie. I didn't even know what he looked like because he was always behind the lens. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, yeah. And this is before like, you know, social like, media. And stuff yeah, like that. before social, before we was on social media. Cause yeah. Even when Instagram existed and people were on it. We were still fully yeah, in the face, streets. Facebook and shit. It was more Facebook, Facebook yeah. 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 And if Facebook, you were on Instagram, it was like... MySpace and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, MySpace, like... Yeah, we'll, we'll mm. get on it because we didn't have phones. So we'll get on a computer, hop on it for like 30 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Get whatever we can, DM mm-hmm. people, and then it's back to the streets. <laughs> yeah, reply so, to the high Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, I remember around that time, not a lot of people had Facebook or high Instagram phones, on their phone like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you'd be on the computer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we do play uh, a little uh, pinball game on the <laughs> seconds. <laughs> you know what I'm Just the little space bar. Yep, yep. <laughs> we'll be on that shit. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, what about you, Mo? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I didn't. You're not cutting me off. No, you're, you're, uh, uh, your job. Your last you, job. you didn't say you're young, like, bros. My my last job, uh, it was it was it was a cool job, but fuck them at the same time. <laughs> I worked at iHeart. I worked at one hundred six and Wild Nine Four Nine. So, oh shit! It was like a radio like station. It, yeah, yeah. So okay. it was like I was street team. You know, I was like okay. slaves of everything. I was like the people that got blamed for everything. You know I mean, <laughs> I was like the go out there and do it. You know, but fuck, bro. Like it, it sucked. But shit, at the end of the day, I get to go to a Drake and Future concert. Like, mm. You feel me? Like. Who does that? And I get paid to drive back home late because I was at the concert. So it was like, it was cool, but it just didn't let me. They didn't fuck with me with the pictures or the video. Uh, I don't really blame him because I remember I shot a Young Jeezy uh, uh, concert. I put Young Jezzy. (laughs) (laughs) He's dyslexic. I missed the E. I missed one E. And they were like, are you serious? Young and, and just like blah blah blah, but I was like, "Fuck!" 
And we're like, fuck. Yeah, Sorry, mama. And I, I started, and I started shooting videos. I started making money, and I was just like, "Fuck this job!" Like, yeah, that's the first time I heard you with Bean. Bean had you like, on a lot of his videos. Yeah, shout out Kumpa Bean. Yeah, yeah, that's where I see. That's where I first heard you. Um, but shit, going back to what we were just talking about before, there's a, like the prison stuff. Um, yeah. you were just talking about how like it helped your relationship with your mom and everything. Uh, how would you feel like like growing up and just going to prison and doing all that changes your perspective on? Your lifestyle and everything, because I, re- I remember the other day I seen you post something on Instagram where it was like, like uh, the new kind of gang banging is opening businesses, teaching mm-hmm. the youth, right. etc. Which is kind of like what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? So like, how how would you say like like your your would you say like it's your, your age and like just you know your just your personal growth it kind of changes your perspective, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I would say like for me, I've always just been a natural like type of person to fuck around. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, since I was a kid, I would get kicked out of class for that a lot. Like, I was kind of, I wouldn't say the class clown, but I'll keep people laughing in my little corner. <laughs> so they'll be like, my name's Eddie. So be like, Eddie, get the fuck out. Go to detention. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's like the same thing I thought, you know, I, w- I would keep doing, but then you meet those people that are like zero tolerance for any type of, you feel me, fuckery. Um, it makes you think, like, damn, like, I really had it good out there. I could go to sleep when I want. I could talk to who I want, to who I want, when I want. Um, you know, you get 15 minutes on the phone, so it's like I could call anybody that I want right now. I could FaceTime if I want. I don't got to hide this device from any police officer. Uh, I could wear any color I want. I could have, you know what I mean? And there is, like, if you don't obey the, the, the law enforcement in there, you're going to obey somebody. So out here, like you kind of got you could, your freedom, you you want. So once I was stripped of all that shit, it just it just made me kind of fortunate. And I just wish that there was somebody younger at the time to teach us about like uh, like financial uh, like advising. Mm-hmm. You feel me? As far as like credit, as far as like uh, all this other shit that we could do. Um, that you know we do as adults because I remember Gosh. I tried to buy some shit like a watch, and the, or a car or a house. There's like, what's your credit score? And you're just like, what the fuck is credit? Like, and how do I get it? You feel me? Like, damn, you should have been taught me this shit a long time ago. And uh, my pops was trying to teach me this shit for a while, but since I was always like in the streets, I'd come home from like let's say like a gang fight, and he would preached some irrelevant shit to me at the time. He was like, see, like, you need to focus on your credit. And I was like, bro, what the fuck is that? I'm like 14 years old. Like, I don't I got street credit. credit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Credit that's I think good, I broke my rib. That, that's, 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 that's a perfect way to put it, bro. Like, a lot of people are focused on street credit, which isn't bad. I don't knock them. If you're in that field, get it by any means. But in the end of the day, like, the street credit ain't going to mean shit when everybody you was trying to prove something to becomes a rat or backstabs you or just goes all bad. It's just like yeah. all that street credit out the window or or you go somewhere where nobody knows you. It's like you got street street credit in your hood, but you're in my mm-hmm. hood now. That shit don't kind of count. You feel me? It counts a certain, you know, it's technical, but that credit, that real credit and the real ownership and all this other shit, that's, that's that, that going to follow you everywhere. You feel exactly. me? Facts. You're going to be able to buy a whip or a house or, or, or properties and land and some more shit way faster than any gang member could ever could, you feel me? So that's just something, you know, you want to learn at a young age. If nobody um, telling you that, like I'm telling you that right now, focus on that shit. Um, school to me, I mean, school's cool. Education. Uh, education, education. Fuck school. Yeah, yeah fuck school. Education. Yeah, school, yeah, all the way to your senior year. If you don't got to keep going after that to, to, to fulfill whatever the fuck you want to do, then fuck that. You know what I mean? Just focus on your dream. I already knew, like, I knew I was going to work. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, I remember the last job I had, I wouldn't sign up for, like, uh, I think it's 401K that pays you for your retirement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, you're the only one that don't got 401K. I was like, I'm not going to retire from here. Like, I'm not going to retire fucking working. Fuck that. You know what I mean? And sure enough, I kind of just spoke that. I just quit one day. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm going to go fucking work for El Barrio or something. <laughs> 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 Become co-director or some shit. Yeah. Producer. 
Yeah, I think I was just thinking about this the other day. It's kind of like it, we're like, what did you call us? First generation Mexican yeah. or Latin yeah. American? First Latin American. Latin American. So it's like I was thinking about it like we had to pretty much go through all the shit to like understand everything because you know our parents are Latinos they really don't care yeah. about none of that shit most of the time like or they don't know, know. We, I mean, they don't know we yeah. gotta we no. gotta learn it ourselves we come yeah. home and teach yeah. them yeah. That, but, that's the craziest but they part. really never really put the effort to learn it themselves to them it was just like what's important is just working and putting food on the table right, yeah. right, right. Exactly. or they, or they exactly. learned it and they couldn't really they couldn't find the skills or the means to, to teach you because like you know like, like, like my like parents it. my parents they were like uh, I'm not gonna say they were like illegals because I don't really know all the information on that but even then, they was kind of afraid to ask. Cause it's like, right. if we ask and we say the wrong thing, yeah, they deport us. Yeah, yeah we rather just keep our mouths shut and work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why uh, my boy, Hot Boy Weez, he posted some shit. The on his gang guy. The North the gang guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. Shout <laughs> out him. He, he be spending a lot of game. So yeah. he said, my parents already went through the hard the yeah. hard part. They went through too much for me to, to, to work a 9 I think I saw that on the story. Yeah. Or do the same shit they did. Like, that'd be disrespectful to them. Like, they really fucking crossed the border, did all this shit, not knowing Spanish enough for me to, to, to go to work and back, do the same shit they did. Or if that goes for anybody to just kind of sit on your ass all day for that. Like, nah. Yeah. They did the hard part. Now you, you got yeah. it easy. That's why it is kind of yeah. funny when, when I see, like, a like a first-generation uh, Latino just complain about shit, how life is hard, and it's just like, Nah, it's when the, when the an American f- complains about life. Bro. Yeah, when it, that's up. when it's real bad. Nah, because like, it's bro. even worse. Because it's just like, bro, you uh, came. I don't from, say it's even worse. No, no, I'm saying because it's just like, bro, you came from hardworking ass people. Like these people uh, came here without yeah. even knowing the language, and they <laughs> set a foundation I, and I made you fucking. Complains. I think if mean? anybody complains, like if you know English in America, yeah. If you were born here, you got your fucking social and your birth certificate. Yeah. And if you're healthy, like. You ain't fucking. You're you know, able, like you're, you, if, yeah. If you're able to move, you ain't got no excuse to not for not do anything for nothing. Got no excuse at all. It's almost a blessing, bro. It's crazy because uh, like I, when we were setting up earlier, he what were you talking about? You said something about like, damn, this is like like two hundred or oh oh. You were like, imagine, bro, making only ten thousand dollars a year. And I was like, bro, isn't that crazy how, like, in another country, that's a fucking fortune, bro? Right. And, like, it's crazy, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you put it to that perspective, it's like, people don't see the bigger picture and how much of a fucking blessing it is. Like, damn, y'all don't wear Vapor Maxes? (laughs) (laughs) Y'all don't know about the Cement 3s out there? (laughs) Shit. Is that the new drops? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but that's why it's crazy. It's like, if you think about it, we're, like, part of history and shit. Like, you know, our parents came here. We're soaking up all the game in America. And as we pay attention, like a lot of younger people are getting richer at a younger age. You get what I'm saying? It's like we're soaking up all this game. We're we're learning how to invest, be smarter with our money, make better decisions. So, you know, it's up to us pretty much to like pass that on to the younger generation. Right, right. Yeah. Hey, that's that's very true. I think I think the next generation, not the not the Gen Z, like like the 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 next the ones that we create with the Gen Z, like that one, them fuckers gonna be Especially the Latin community, because think about it, bro. Like, kind of like how we were saying, saying, that's just scary. Yeah, I don't know, because people don't think about like the long term. You know what I'm saying? Like in the long term, bro, there might be more Latin, Latino business owners in California. No, there are going to be. There are going to be. There are going to be. And it's, it's crazy. just like because remember, like almost 20 years ago, they were like, "Oh, we're they're going to be the majority. We're going to be the majority. We're at that stage, and we're growing." We're we're growing up right now, yeah. and mm-hmm. and 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 making babies and shit. Yeah. You know, you got one already. You're making. You're in the process of. You got one already. Yeah. Y'all y'all in the process of making the the next generation like I and you know to have you know. Too and, big and it all came out of hustle too. Yeah, you know like, what I'm saying like it's it all. So came out like of it, just just imagine, bro. Like we, it's gonna be some some lethal ass Mexican. Lethal. Yeah, and, and then sometimes it feels like. There's a lot of different perspectives you can look at the life that we live, each and every one of us. Mm-hmm. Like, I get this a lot. Like, they tell me, a lot of people, almost every day, some shit, somehow this will come out, they'll be like, well, you don't even work, so you don't even got to worry about it. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I like, all the time, bro. All the time, man. I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, we do work. We just don't have, we're not in the same line of work. Exactly. You feel me? And if anything, it's like, there's no, I don't got a schedule. I got to be in LA at fucking eight in the morning, even though I don't fucking want it. I want to sleep in. Yeah, you don't and get gotta overtime. For, I got to be there for three days. And I'm on top of that, I'm not getting paid to go. Yeah. You feel me? I got to wait on that check to come yeah. months from now. You feel me? 
it's all just investing time and effort and money into into that shit. You feel me? And that's what a lot of like we don't got. If I don't if I don't do nothing, I ain't getting paid. You feel me? If I sit down in my house all week, I ain't getting paid. I gotta go out there and just work. You feel me? And uh, that's 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 like a lot of like a big misconception people have about us. Uh, And then sometimes you're waiting on that big break. But it's like you look at yourself exactly a year from now, and it's like how far have you came? Mm-hmm. You know how much videos have you filmed since then? How much connections have you built? How much uh, equipment have you bought since then? And you're like, okay, for sure. And it motivates you to be like, I can't wait for the next year. See how much more we yeah, gonna exactly. build. You feel me? Yeah, exactly. Sure. Like, that's the thing. A lot of people don't understand. They think we're just shoot and hold the camera, but it's like. Or even being an artist, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like you got to work for your money. You can't just wait. Yeah. It's not like a, you go to a job they just pay you every two weeks. You get what I'm saying? You got to yeah. go out there and get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for uh, sure. It's part of the hustle for sure. Yeah, like yeah. them 2 a.m. studio morning, you know what I'm saying, sessions and shit like that. Using their oh, shit. Yeah, no, I have a video, <laughs> uh, a picture too I saved. Oh, I didn't save. I saved it to like my iCloud. And I got a new phone and it just popped up. I was like, oh shit, I forgot about this. When I was on probation, I would go to work. I would drop my... Either drop my daughter off at the babysitters or pick her up. And then uh, I remember because I was limited on, on money at the time. I was only getting paid, let's say, I don't know if it was maybe like three, four, five hundred dollars a week. I don't know. But I had to even that out. Like, okay, a hundred for groceries, a hundred for uh, rent, a hundred for bills type shit, you know? So in the end, I was only stuck with like $50, $20, you know what I'm saying? That's for like gas. So I would recycle. I would fucking collect the bottles and the, and the cans that I would drink out of. And I would take that, fill my whip up. I had a bucket at the time to go to work. Take that to the fucking recycling center. Recycle it, maybe get like $50 back. Use that to pay for like an hour of studio time. And I would get off work maybe like at midnight. Go to the studio at 1 in the morning. Be there till like 4 in the morning. Uh, come back. Pick up my daughter. Like all that shit. I was like, man... And when I first got my first royalty check, it was like a dollar and fifty cents. I was like, "How the fuck do people get paid off this shit? How are these rappers buying all this shit, yeah. right?" But it was like that for me for a long time before I actually started seeing any type of like bigger income. I was like, "Oh shit!" Like it finally got there, but it definitely didn't happen overnight. It took a long time. It feels good to uh, look back and remember, like, man, I remember picking up my daughter. Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. After, like that shit popped out because that picture. I was yeah. like, "Oh shit." I'm almost gonna post it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna post it, but yeah, the, the, those things. Good memories. memories. Memories like that kind of push you, push you to get, go harder for real. Like especially, Thanks. especially if you just if you're if you're uh, reflecting and just like, damn man, I, I made I made a huge impact since then. Yeah, I gotta man. keep. Oh, yeah. I want to look at something from this point. Yeah. And see how I'm gonna feel in the future now. Sure. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure, for sure. It's only like, gonna keep getting bigger. You guys ever like, like, uh, like not go through it, but like you guys stumble upon old posts and just end up looking through your old shit and just like, oh shit, like mm-hmm. kind of came along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I remember that. Like, I just I forgot who I was talking to about that. Where it's like, damn, bro, I remember those good old times where you just you know charges like two hundred bucks for a video, hundred bucks for a video. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even yeah. tripping about the money. You know what I'm saying? You just doing it, just doing. It was like good old times, you know what I'm saying? Good memories and stuff. And it like was that. fire too. You look yeah, back at you're like, Ooh. Ooh. I'd be like, Yes, I did a three hundred dollar video and then Stewie would be like, Y'all charging three hundred dollars looking like shit. I'm just like, Oh fuck. <laughs> 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 like, oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, at least I got three hundred dollars. Buy a buy a zip. <laughs> <laughs> buy a little zip. <laughs> a little zip. <laughs> nah, at the time you buy two with that. Yeah, at that time, yeah, yeah, for sure. So funny. Yeah, the Wii change the Wii game changed a lot too. Oh yeah. I mean I look, bro, just it used to it used I remember to they used come. to come in like the little Ziploc bags and used to stuff like a gram mm-hmm. in there. How would you <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't imagine putting one in now. Like imagine putting like a nice dense sack in one of those. Yeah. Fuck no. That's a bowl right there. Nah, yeah, I seen like fuck I remember that shit. We used to all put in five dollars, four <sighs> of us. Good to come and drop off the little baggie. And then you're like, oh, this is fire. <laughs> with, with the little Nike signs on them and shit. Yeah, little with play- or with Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> this is some Batman kush. Now it has Batman on it. Now it's fucking. Now it's like in stores where you can go buy this shit. Crazy. Crypto lotto. I ain't even that old, bro. I'm still in my 20s and I feel old as fuck. <laughs> Just talking about that shit. Hey, 
for sure. Like, look. Yeah, you got stores and brands. Like, yeah. y'all yeah, remember the cans? That was a weird ass phase. That was yeah. a weird phase. That was hella weird. You buy a little can and just. Look. You look. remember that? I think even backpack boys used to put it in their cans. If I'm not mistaken. What cans? They had like, like little. They, they had, had like little, little cans of like weed. Mint. They were like little oh, weed yeah. cans. Oh, like, like yeah, they had the bubblegum gelatos and all that shit. Like, like tuna, cannabis. like a tuna. Yeah. Yeah. Like tuna. Nah, cannabis. I was probably locked. I was probably in prison at that time. <laughs> 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 I don't think that lasted that long. Yeah, it was. No, it was only did. for like a year. To and be I honest. I think it was. And you don't want to know where the weed came out of. Uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, I think. Maybe you were in prison. Yeah, I think yeah. you were. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like it six, was like sixteen, seventeen, sixteen, eighteen, ish, sixteen, like no, eighteen. I'm, no, nah, actually, yeah. probably like no, seventeen. No, 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 because I remember I even I got sushi in a can. What? <laughs> sushi was around. Sushi was around. Yeah, I, was, I got locked up 2015. Came out like mid 2016, and then I was on probation. To no wait, I think I got out 2017. <laughs> So you were so, in 16. Yeah, so out it 17. probably was all yeah, 17. Out 17. Yeah, right, okay. And then off probation in 2018. So, so, I didn't so even you smoke at the you time. You probably didn't smoke, so you, you they yeah. didn't hit you with the oh. <laughs> I would have probably gave it back, like, get this disrespectful <laughs> shit out of my fucking face and put in a little fucking Ziploc bag. <laughs> Give him a little. Yeah, and then, and then it'd be the the little Ziplocs with the, with the, with the sticker on it. Mm, the little RX sticker? The RX sticker. That, that, was, that was a huge phase. And then, and then I guess it was the cookie bags after that. Remember the that's the first C's? bags I seen was the, was yeah, the cookies, cookies bags. yeah, just the C's. C's. And then they had the clear ones, the clear C. Yeah, and then and then runs came out. Runs came out, at the, and then yeah. runs' packaging was a little cool because they had all the little, little candies and yeah. front and shit. I smoked the first runs for sure. Yeah, the real first runs, those were dope. With the candies, yeah, with the yeah. candies on the bag, nice. the ones that got sued. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, for real. Times have changed. Mm, Times man. have changed. It's the good man. old days. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you ever smoke weed in prison? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so you look forward to that in Pruno. Pruno? Yeah. Did that sh- can that shit make you sick? Uh if cook if you cook it wrong, yeah. Cause I'm sure. But if you like, cook it right, yeah, for sure that shit'll get you fucked up. I see there's yeah. a TikTok. That must be fun. This is a guy yeah. on TikTok. He'd be making hella uh, prison food. He'd be like, Hey Bunky. Oh yeah. You want enchiladas? And then it's just like Yeah, he just starts breaking noodles. And he eats it and it's like busting. Yeah, yeah. That, there's a lot of good prison food. Have you there. have you have you uh dug into the cuisine out there? Any 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 memorable Foods that have, have, I don't know. Have you fucked around? What was your favorite food? Like, have, you, have, have y'all made any any special foods out there? In like prison? they be saying in prison? Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. For Some so. the, the, shit, the, shit, the shit they serve in there is, is isn't this isn't him though. For sure. You got to make it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Um, they make some like some fire sweet and sour. They basically make like generic foods out here. With what they got in well, there. Yeah, because I remember making sweet and sour was just hot sauce and like jelly and shit. Jelly yeah. and like some other shit. I kind of forgot, but. They make like prison style uh, pozole. Oh, yeah. prison I style think that's what it was. Tamales. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they put the cornets in the in the in the in the broth. Kind of let them soak to make the hominy. And yeah. Like, they make like uh, Fritos are like basically crunchy tortillas. So they fucking put water on it and crush them down and make masa. And they make like uh, t- tamales. Oh, and that's, that's, that's the fire. Ba- oh, what? Yeah. You just gotta kind of get like creative, creative. with it. And yeah, they yeah. do sell like raw tortillas, like the fucking packets. Yeah. And then you'll like scrape the paint off your bunk and then make a fire under it to kind of make a comal. Oh, and then you start oh, making tortillas. Benny yeah, Hanna yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Type shit. <laughs> you rig some shit. Like, there's a bunch of shit you can make in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you get creative and then you kind of make the best out of it. Out of That's it. crazy. Yeah, they, they even uh, showed how to make like ice cream and like milkshakes and stuff. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, I don't think I've tried that yet. <laughs> that was probably, that was probably a special <laughs> sensitive needs. They're yours. probably like in Denver, Colorado or yeah, something. Out of state or something. Nah, I feel like Denver, Colorado is worse. That's like maximum security. Yeah. Ain't that it, all depends, it all depends on where you at too because a lot of people don't get the same things you do in yeah. prison. Like, you guys get those over there? We don't and I'm sure things. you guys, you, uh, it's different like levels too because uh, at some levels you can't even talk to the guards. So other levels, I think you could talk to the guards. And yeah, guards it's different. Do shit it's, for you yeah, it's shit. different everywhere you go. For he sure. was like, even the county jails are. Because he was like, "Hey, tell tell the guard bring some ice," and I don't think you can do that everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's for sure. You ain't yeah. doing that shit. <laughs> but that was very interesting. Prison prison foods is is very interesting and very unique. And 
So yeah. They really take it serious too. Hopefully, like I never. Anything, hopefully, yeah. I never get to try it. Cause and I it's crazy too, because like if you ain't good at it, like they get on you, kind of like man, you you fucking cook, you can't cook for shit. And it's like, oh, I'm damn. cooking a soup and some chips. Like, what do you want me to do? With this? There's only so much I can do with this. Like, get out of the way. Your, cook, your cooking coordination's garbage. First of all, mm. I'm like, damn, like that motherfucker been down for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Your staff for cooking wrong and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moda, Mo stay out of jail. <laughs> no, I'll, no, I'll probably, I'll probably cook good. I'll probably have Mota snacks and shit. Yeah. Mota snacks. Mota snacks. Nah, yeah, we just actually did a, a a music video in L.A. in a jail scene. <clears throat> That was hot as fuck. That was dope. That, that was, was hot. hella hot. Like, yeah. <laughs> the first set was hella hot. The little interrogation room. Oh my god, I'm bro! So sorry, bro. I was and sweating. I, and then like, fuck. I, I, hey, whatever happened to the porno you guys bought for me? Dude, we bro. forgot about it, and we and <laughs> ah, 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 fumble. I sorry, just remember that? Sorry, y'all. <laughs> ah, they're gonna be after me. Oh, hey, let's explain it though. Let's, let's explain it. Okay. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> yeah, hold on. If you guys didn't know, I showed up, and it's in the vlog. It's gonna come out in the vlog. Um, yes, sir. I showed up to L.A. to this first movie scene, and uh, these dudes greeted me with uh, handcuffs and uh, a porno DVD. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we put up to the sex. Because, bro, we, we, needed, we needed a set of handcuffs for the, for the shot, and we were like, where the hell are we going to get handcuffs at? Sex shot. Sex shot. shot. Sure. Sex shot. Sure. So we put up to the first sex shot we seen right Hella away. Hella in there, bro. That shit was weird. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a two of your deals there, like <laughs> Hella yeah. watching us. Like they're watching you guys to see what you guys gonna get first. Like, and, then, and then I was embarrassed because one, I already knew we couldn't record in there. Two, I didn't go. <laughs> we're gonna be the only ones there fucking around. It just felt so wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have it be like that than and be hella serious, one, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I did not want to go in there and be like, oh. <laughs> This was like, this will work. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Like, dude, he has dicks everywhere. <laughs> and he was, it was, it was like hella. Uh, damn, I'm knocking this shit. What, up, what are you doing? Real? Reaching over here for yeah. real? Yeah. space and shit. Guess I was gonna roundhouse kick me. <laughs> He's gonna hit you with the fucking neck chops. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, yeah, these fools were wild, and they're like, no, they couldn't even. They could barely speak English and shit. That's how I knew it was awkward, and some some other shit was going on there. Weird. Yeah, yeah, they had yeah. a glory hole in. For real? <laughs> they had to try it or what? <laughs> he did. Yeah. It was, it, it, was, it was a store worker, the dude. It was a store worker. <laughs> <laughs> he went back there. He, he went back there. When and, went. and then he turned around and said, wait, where'd he go? <laughs> and then he started uh, feeling something. Nah, but oh, that shit was hella fun. It was hella, it was hella cool. I wish they had AC in it, though, because it was just hella hot. I remember yeah. it being hella hot. Them, them prison outfits was cool. I'm glad. I'm glad they worked oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. That shit was cool. It was uh, cool bloopers and shit. Yeah. Cool yeah. ass um, bloopers. Yeah, I get that shit all the time. Like, man, like your guys' video shoots look hella fun. Yeah. And, and yeah. I get a lot of complaining too. Like, you guys just look like you guys are fucking around over there. <laughs> I'm like, bro, we just. You get complaints? complaints? Certain people. Yeah. Certain, certain, certain people. people. Certain people. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie it, it looks kind of weird on us too Cause it's just like We're supposed to be shooting But we're over here like Hey yeah, like, We just making a here. Just, just cause I'm taking a shot Every two minutes Doesn't mean I'm not working <laughs> You know what I'm saying And it's just like It's, it's, it's just fun working You feel me Why, why have like You feel me that's yeah, that's, that's, that's why we work so hard for it Right To have fun with just it to have fun right, right. How are you gonna <clears throat> How are you gonna work so hard And not have fun doing it You feel me Facts. Yeah Facts. That's, the, you, that's the blessing You that can work hard While having fun Like right, I can sure. We can like you know like when we have our when we have our headsets on and it's work time we could still be like you're a bitch but I'm just, <laughs> while while Stewie tells me to do something be like fuck you I'm not gonna do it but I'm gonna do it like as I'm doing it and you know we get you know it's just about having fun yeah, 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 having yeah. having good spirits you know just having yeah. and then y'all are hella fun to be with like y'all are just hella funny Rico Exito's hella funny. Yeah. yeah, I see through after a couple shots, just just start going <laughs> ham. Yeah, yeah, that's it for sure. That shit hella funny. Yeah, well, let's tra let's transition that into the what's it called the the red alert project. Oh, okay, yeah, red alert. So, so how'd that come me, about? Me, did, did, uh, who came up with the idea and how? What was the whole get down with putting it all together? Keep it a hundred. I'm. We try to uh, kind of pinpoint it. We couldn't pinpoint it where it started. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remember in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I reached out to everybody one day, and I was like, "Look, 
at the time, it is just because you guys are hearing about it right now, it doesn't mean it hasn't been in the works for a while. Yeah, it'd be like that. So I, had, so, yeah. I tried to cut you off, but I did see a picture that you guys posted, and it was like two years ago, yeah, and it was, it was all like, you guys. Yeah, it was I was like, damn. Ago, yeah. So <clears throat> at the time, the ones who was in it, we had our buzz going already. Yeah, There was a lot of rappers rapping, a lot of homies rapping at the time. But at that time, when I reached out to everybody, we were the only ones that had like a like a like like the biggest buzz kind of, you know? So I just got an idea and it wasn't even really kind of like more I don't know even know if it was like a project idea. I don't remember it was so long ago that I was like, bruh, I got I'm thinking of you, you, you and you. I'll book like an eight hour session. Uh can you guys meet me here at this time? They're like, yeah. And it was like the session was from like ten to five in the morning type shit. Jeez. And we had two of them back to back. So we knocked out X amount of songs, and then we kind of just took a break from it for like a year, mm. and <laughs> and it just didn't go nowhere. Then we kind of wrapped it up again, and kind of, kind of, we didn't let it die out. We're like, bro, like this has been over a year. We only got this much songs. Let's go get a little more. So we did, and then it was just kind of with a title. We were kind of struggling with the title. Excuse me. All these drinks you guys are giving me. All right, <laughs> shit. So, the the album off top was going to be called Red Alert. You know what I'm saying? Because it was kind of like an alarm, like, mm. um, like we're coming. You feel me? Like, red signifying, you feel me? We're from Northern Cali and shit like that. Nothing more than that, nothing specific. It was just kind of more like an alarming, like, we're, this is a new wave that we're coming. So... When we did that, uh, then we had to find a kind of find like a group name. There was a lot of names thrown out there, a lot of different names, but we ended up kind of settling for like let's just give a self title because it was nothing like a label forced us to do. It was nothing that um, we were kind of forced into, or, or it was more like we were all homies before the <laughs> rap, before that rap group or whatever. I was cool as fuck with Rico, Acito, Iggy, Wood, everybody is in it. Now it's just like, let's just collab on a tape. So we kind of already spoke about it, like whether this is our first and last, whether we do another one, whatever the case may be, like we still, we already got our own buzz before this rap group, you know what I mean? And even after this shit, we still gonna keep doing our thing. Um, we just kind of want to give the fans what they want. It's more about the fans. The fans want to see a lot of people, a lot of us on the same tracks. So we're like, fuck it, let's do it. And it's not even out yet. Like, we got one video out that El Barrio shot, and that's just going crazy, you know? That's just, like, at 100-plus views in, a, in less than a week. I think we're going to get a mil in less than a month. For sure. And, that you know, we're just going to keep coming and coming and coming with it. Um, that's just kind of how that came about. Um, there was no real structure or nothing behind it. It just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like seeing, uh, I always say that too, like when people are buzzing, it's better like to unite and just make it bigger than you and the next person, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like a whole, turn into a whole movement and it, it, help, it motivates other people to like do shit like that too, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I, obviously ever, like since we, since we started it, there's obviously been more artists like on the rise since then, so a lot of people are like, why don't you get in, why don't you get in, like it's just something we started like yeah. a while back that is barely coming to light right now. But you know everybody doing their thing. That's dope. <coughs> Hell yeah! yeah should, hopefully it all goes good for y'all for sure. Yeah. yeah. You guys have a drop date for the album already, or? Uh, well, if you guys do release it before then, you guys going here first. It's, uh, we got it aligned for the 29th right now, so that's in uh, just a couple two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the album's supposed to drop in two weeks, uh, and I think it's I think it's gonna be big. I think it is I too. So ever too. since ever since with. Like ever since war, I think. Yeah, war yeah. was a nice like, one. Oh, yeah, you guys shot war, too. Yeah. Ever since, like, SOBRBE and, like, uh, Shoreline Mafia, they ain't really been, like, a rap group in Cali that I could think of. Right. Yeah. Facts. Yeah, that's kind of true, yeah. yeah. And those two videos that we got in the VAR, bangers, bro. Those two videos yeah. and the, the, the way they just connect and everything. The lick oh, yeah. and, and... I'm trying to see how you guys are going to transition it. Because, right. one, it kind of seems like... Uh, like a trailer for the next one. We might, right, that's kind of how trying we, to see how we, you guys are going to transition. We, 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 we're going to have to figure out how to connect it like that because that's how we wanted to do it. But we might have to be like six months later or some shit. Like 
something because it's like we off didn't time, off time. and honestly I think we should I think we should get like one more because there's like two more bangers on that album that kind of need it like, we gotta talk to the compas yeah I gotta talk to the to the people talk to the people talk to the people to the fucking uh, to the folks up top I think we need one more off top <coughs> it's going good though it's oh yeah good so far oh yeah yeah it's just looking good everyone's loving that another one they're ready for another one for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. For real. Already dropped a hit. I want another one. <laughs> for real. What's up? Y'all yeah. ready for another shot or what? So I was just going to say, too. Let's do it. While we take we, this I shot. I think we might just kill this whole bottle in one little rotation, right? While we take this shot, I just want to give a huge shout out to uh, El Barrio for letting me have this backpack, boys, on the table. Hell yeah. It's all, yeah, it's all love. Shout, shout out, out to Backpack, backpack Boys. boys. Whoever hasn't backpack. heard of all Backpack love. Boys, it's. Uh, two five. You feel me? Backpack me, boys, to, Alcien. to me, one of the biggest strains and uh, one of the biggest yeah, yeah, uh, weed yeah. companies in um, yeah, 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 yeah. in California. You feel me? And, oh, and, and nationwide, period. You feel me? Shout out to homie Q Quesada, Con Pape, and everybody, everybody from the Backpack team. El con going Pape. crazy with it. Con Pape was supposed to sponsor us a few episodes ago, but you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where's it? Where's that? Where's that? Uh, that, that little sponsor at? Oh, we still need a sponsor. Still need a sponsor. Still need a sponsor. It would be an honor. Caleb, what's your local dispensaries, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. But you feel me? State to state. Compass in Memphis be smoking this shit out there, too. Yeah, yeah. Memphis, Detroit. I think they're actually about to open up a Detroit store uh, this oh, month. I believe. There you go. Damn. Oh, 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 oh. Here you go. Los tocayos. We got to the prison <laughs> food doing that. <laughs> I'm saying you would have got like two shots of the rib if that was a prison. <laughs> All right. All right. You didn't do better. All right. Uh, <laughs> Salud. Salud. I wait. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> so, as, as being a. Uh, Touched on what we was talking about earlier, like you as a father, how do you feel like how's your how's your kid? That's different. That's a different question right there. Yeah, how, how's your kid? Uh my <sighs> daughter is five. She's actually about to turn uh six next month in May. And I just got a text from her teacher too. Uh, I guess they did certain tests in the district and she scored the highest out of her entire grade level in the district. Oh damn. So I was like, man, like I gotta reward her for that. That's so dope. But um, since she's uh, around at it, how do you feel like from the game that you got and, you know, from experiences from how your parents, you know, treated you, how do you feel like you're going to give that game to your daughter? And how are you since – are you, how, do, how do you explain this? Like, how do you feel like you're going to – are you going to spoil them? You're going to make them work for their shit? Like, and wait, you get wait, what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, well, here's the thing. Like, I don't think there's – I mean, without tr- trying to make it sound wrong, like, there's not a specific uh, set of rules to being like the perfect father or the perfect sure. mother. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Everybody gonna raise their kids differently. Uh, me, my parents is like my parents beat the shit out of me. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> they beat the fuck out of me, bro. And uh, I don't hold a grudge against them today. You feel me? Like if you guys think I deserve that ass whooping, hey, I probably did. Sure. But there's some know. that do hold a grudge, like you. Yeah, there's some that, that did, and my parents oh. apologize. Like my mom's apologizes to me to all the time. Like I'm sorry for for doing that to you when I was a kid. Like being the fuck out of you with a belt or the chancla. But uh, I'm like, bro, like I, I don't remember that really like that. Like I don't feel you the pain no more. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't blame her. Like I was probably being a knucklehead. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so me, like personally. Like, I give my daughter any anything she asks for, I give it to her. You feel me? Um, it's like she wants, like, a certain set of toys or, like, a certain... She knows exactly what she wants off of these all YouTube ads. She'll pause it and be like, look, I need this. <laughs> so, like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get it for you. I'll wait a couple weeks. You know, I get news like this. So, I'm like, off top, you're going to get it. You know, I, t- I ain't never been... My parents never taught me how to ride a bike. They never taught me how to fly a kite. They never taught me nothing about loving a female... Nothing like my parents is just like we got food, we got beans on t- and tortillas on the table. Comida en la casa. 
Fucking behave, yeah. Yeah, portate bien. Yeah, that's it. Y échale ganas. Yeah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> and did you, did you do your homework already? Like, that's that's it. Like, my parents, and I don't knock them because me, like, I'm grown and humble enough to understand that they was working. You yeah, feel yeah. me? So, I try to spend as much time as I can. As much as I'm on the road, almost every single minute that I'm not on the road, I'm with my daughter. Even though I don't post it or tell anybody nothing, those who are around me, they know I have my daughter with me all the time. So that's big. That's important to me to, to spend time with her so she can have, you feel me, as much memories as she can. And um, I took her to Disneyland for her birthday. I took her to Legoland for her birthday. That's my first time as an adult being in, you know, amusement parks like that. Um, I, I'm i there, like, every birthday party I give her what she wants. Like, it's just, it's just... Uh, I, I I hit my daughter one time that I know of and remember and fully like only one time and it was just slapping the hand yeah. and I felt bad as shit for it. I was like, oh, I'm the worst <laughs> parent ever, <laughs> right? Because she didn't want to pick up her toys one day and I was in a hurry, you know. I was like, come on, dude, like you made a mess, like let's pick these up. And she just kind of never minded. So I smacked her hand. As soon as I did, I was like teary eyed, like, <laughs> oh shit, what did I do? And it didn't even phase her. But me, I was like, bruh, that's the only one time I've ever hit my daughter anywhere. You feel me? He's a smack in the hand. Um, so I think I'm doing okay as a dad. You feel me? Um, I don't hit my, my daughter like my, my parents hit me. Um, one thing that me and her mom did agree to was that, like me, when I told you earlier that when I went to work in the fields and I had to pick, yeah. fruits and shit like that um that under, that gave me like damn like this is how much a dollar's worth i gotta pick these four buckets and i'll get a dollar feel me and it's gonna take me an hour and a half to pick these four buckets that sunk in like damn like my mom really my mom really, really put bands on a lawyer for me when i was fighting my cases shit like that it was a big eye opener so right now obviously she's too small we buy her clothes her shoes her toys whatever she wants but once she's of age, like 15, 16, you're going to the fields too. You're going to the fields for summer, and you're going to work for your money, and you're going to see what it was like for, you know, us to to, 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 to provide for you too. And that's just to kind of humble her be like, oh, shit, like my parents work hard for their money. Yeah, definitely, for so, sure. So you feel me? Like, a little shit like that. You know, we have little things. Um, but aside that, you feel me? Like, as far as, like, Insurance or like uh, life, uh, what is it, what is this called? Um, what's that shit when you die? <clears throat> life, insurance. life insurance. Life insurance and shit like that. Like, if we got anything like that, like that's all like to my daughter, because yeah. that's like that's the next generation. You know Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And yeah. there's no right time to have a kid. Yeah. Everybody's like, let's wait for the right time. Let's wait for this. Never gonna be. Yeah, that's the just, hype I'm on right just now. Just do it. <laughs> just everything will just follow. Just do it. Just take yeah. the condom off. <laughs> No, just uh, <laughs> stop taking that pill. <laughs> oh, yeah, you on the plan C, son? The plan C. <laughs> <laughs> Hormones, bro. God uh, damn it. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There I nah, go. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the most important, important person in the world for me. Dad. My yeah, daughter, sure. is everything is, is for her, you feel me? Uh, she be motivating me to come because sometimes I'm like, I don't want to go to the studio session today, like, just like you don't want to go to school in the morning, I don't want to go to the studio session. <laughs> She's like, but you got to go. She's like, how are you going to buy me stuff? <laughs> I'm like, okay, you're getting the picture. Like, All right, come on, let's go. Question for both of you guys. Is it true, like, your life changes when sure. you have a kid? Yeah. Like, your mentality like, changes. Like, like you, the way you think and see things, like. like everything, everything. Sure. And you got five, you, you five years on your back. You got almost, you got, a, year. You got almost a year, so it's like, Thanks. like. Even then, like, well, we come from different backgrounds, too, but, like. There's been certain people, like, let's say in the past years ago when she was, like, maybe two, three years old that, you know, I go to the liquor store because, you know, I'm a regular there or whatever. And there's certain people I don't like or not necessarily that I don't like, but, like, we had issues in the past. And I have my daughter with me, you know. And at first it's kind of like, oh, shit, like, what's yeah. going to happen? You know, and, like, I'll have a, a heads up or something. But then I look at her, you know, and she, like, smiles. And I'm like, no. Nah. That shit ain't even worth it. You know, like, everything changes. Like, your whole perspective on anything, like, they come first, you feel me? It's like, it, it was it was a big change to me. Like, that shit. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And it's crazy how much you see yourself in them. You feel me? Growing up, it's like, shit you do, little, 
Do a little face you do. <laughs> like that's it. You start. And one of my kids started doing that. I'd be like, get that fuck. <laughs> no, yeah, and, and you can't be mad at that because, like, they'll be like, they'll do some shit that gets you mad, and then yeah. you're just like, nah, like that's me right there. She got that for me. That's crazy. And then like, you can't be mad at it because they it's they literally inherit a lot of shit from you. Sure. Yeah. So that's so why you got to find that good balance between, you know, how your parents discipline you and spoiling them, but not giving them yeah, too much. Yeah, exactly, you know exactly. Stuart, have you, have you uh, faced any changes? Have you noticed any changes? Have you, like... Or just your mentality, the- bro. Just you feel like you got you got something to live for now, and you, you always want to make it home safely. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why I was like, yeah, I want to go to a club. I'm like, nah, I ain't trying to go to a club. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? Because you never know. Yeah, you yeah, you go to a club, you get shot, a little stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah facts. So it's just you start moving different. You start thinking different. Like, you start going out late. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it makes me work harder, too, because I'm just like, I put money in this shit. Like, what do you want to go to college? Start your own business. So, you know, it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> Maybe we should start having kids, fool. I'm already practicing, bro. Already. I'm practicing <laughs> all, all day, all night. I already three took times, off the plan C. I'm three times two, a day. I'm already two days <laughs> off. Three, three times. If you don't practice three times a day like Kobe, bro, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm practicing. I'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be playing. balling in the pants. Yeah, for real. Kids is everything. Balling the culo. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about everyone on social media always trying to feel like they got to prove something? Like posting guns, posting money they don't got, doing all this and that, like they're pretty much incriminating themselves. I feel like I don't know. I feel like that's like MySpace days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that. Shit. I'm trying to remember. If you're, still, <laughs> if you're still trying to do that in 2022, like, and I see a lot of people too. It's like, and once you start getting like that type of money, for example, like me, like I know it, five bands or ten bands and. Different dollar amounts looks yeah, like. Yeah, right. I know what ten bands and in 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 a hundred look like, thing. And, and I know doves. what ten bands and doves look like. So, a lot of times, I I like I'll see somebody, like somebody just typed the fucking, um, somebody just put like gay as fuck in like that another one video. That's like the only negative comment. So sometimes you're curious to see like who is this? You feel me? Like is this a joke? Is this whatever? Click on their profile and they're like doing like a money spread in one of their pictures. I'm like, but that's a thousand dollars. I know what a thousand dollars looks like. Like, why would you do that in a in a post? Like, come on, my boy, don't even reply to this shit like that. Uh, people that are shit. like with guns, that's the gayest shit you could do. Respect, shit you could respectfully, do. respectfully. I didn't mean that towards like yeah, yeah, the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll that's bleep like, it out. Okay, let me do it. That's that's the dumbest thing you could do is post a gun on Instagram, whether it be a story or a post, like. That's just the most ungangster shit you could do is post guns. I mean, money isn't too serious, I guess. If you got like fifty bands, you know, like if you got it like that, fuck it. But if you're gonna post a thousand dollars, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you post a thousand dollars from a lemonade stand, that's different. Yeah, yeah. If you're but five, in one if day, you made it in one day out of your lemonade like, stand. Like, you know, like hey, that's a lot of. Lemonade. I rented out chairs <laughs> and made a thousand dollars. Yeah, no, no, no. But as if more, you're just here, like, and then you put some. GB Lil Bean lyrics at the past the cash. Uh, <laughs> as, 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 you know, as your girl, as your girl who runs the trap with some with some dirty J's <clears> and, <throat> and some ah uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like there's there's levels to it, you know. It's crazy, bro. And it's just all about like if you're doing it right with motivational purposes, then I agree with it with the money. Yeah. Um, if you're doing it to show off that you're a trapper and you're flashing two thousand dollars, that ain't him. And never with guns, you feel me? Never, because that's just stupid. Everybody. That shit irritates my soul every time I see that. Like, yeah, like everybody got guns. Everybody. So it's like posting it isn't going to scare nobody, so <laughs> why are you posting it? Yeah, yeah, and that's it's just true. like. That's true. That's just weird. But like, the, got the, range. the only acceptable time you have to say would be like showing off your gun collection, I feel like. That's cool. Or like, man, maybe that. like, that'd be dope. You know or what I'm saying? Like, ooh, or okay. if you encounter a gold gun, you cannot take a picture of a gold gun. True. Yeah, there you go. Like a gold AK or something. <laughs> like something special. Yeah, that's a gold you know, AK. I got a gold. I ran into a gold AK. Or even like, then, even then, like, <laughs> you know how we, we use props in the videos? Yeah. I took a picture one time in LA and I had props, you know, and I quoted one of the lyrics in that video. And everybody's like, dude, those guns are fake as fuck. Well, I didn't post it to show you that yeah, they were real. I, <laughs> I just wanted to show you that I just made a music video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't do it with those intentions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But 
it's just then again, nah, we don't got nothing to prove to nobody. At least I don't. I don't got shit to prove to nobody. Nobody helps me pay my bills. Nobody helped me within my career. Um, no, you know, unless it's El Barrio, I don't got nothing to prove to nobody. <laughs> you, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Fucking <laughs> parasites. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cussers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking I don't parasites. live to live. <laughs> Do more than those fools. Uh, oh. What's up with these backpack boys, bro? Like, how, how'd y'all, how'd y'all, how'd y'all get tapped in? Oh, shit. The way I got locked in was, uh, I had a, I was on my way to a studio session. Um, I was just, um, was about to go to the studio session with my engineer, DJ Chrissy Chris. And, um, I got a random call. They were like, hey, uh. These dudes want to shoot a video with you. They need you for a video shoot in Hollister, I believe. Never been to Hollister before. Excuse me. And they were like, oh, they're part of the Backpack Boys. And it's crazy because my boy JP uh, was just telling me about Backpack Boys like a year before that. He was teaching me about how the tree business works and all this stuff. And he was like, yeah, man, that's how this Backpack Boys did it. That's why they're so popping. So I heard of Backpack Boys before, but they're like, yeah, Backpack Boys... Want to um, shoot a video with you? So I was like, I can't. Like, I'm already on my way to a studio session that I, I got to knock out. And they're like, well, you know, they're willing to, you know, kick some funds to you if you can make it. I was like, when? when is it? They're like, right now. Like, they need you, like, in mm-hmm. Hollister right now. <laughs> it's like a two-hour <laughs> drive. Damn. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, well, you know what? Like, sometimes, like, to me, I believe, too, like, it ain't always about the funds. It's about the connections you could build. You feel me? And that's worked for me so many times to where I'm like, I could I could make these this money back. Let me go see what's going on over here, you know? It's a different crowd that I, I, I never met. Um, so I cancel my session. I go fuck with uh, the homies over here in Hollister. And that's where I meet um, Q, Kesala. So he just, you know, off straight to biz, you know, we'll appreciate you for making it. We'll, we'll, you know what I mean? We have a little talk, and he just straightforward from the gate. Humble dude, just business dude, you know? And ever since then, you know, we just kind of locked lines, and we just kept chopping it up back and forth. Um, we kept meeting up at certain places. He invited me to his Long Beach um, uh well, I actually told him, I was like, I'm going to see you again. I'm going to your Long Beach Grand Opening for the dispensary. He's like, I was going to invite you, but I, I I thought that would be too far for you. I was like, nah, it's good. Yeah. And it just kept going like that, just inviting each other, fucking with each other. Um, and it just, it just became my brother type shit, you know what I'm saying? Him, cartel money, um, and we just got locked the fuck in. Like, yeah, that's 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 family now, you know? That's what's up. Yeah, that's yeah. His, that's how we that's how we met. And everybody <coughs> else, all and the other homies. Since then, yeah, it just, all the other it homies kind of started coming together, just little by little, little, little by little. And there ain't no telling where you know. Yeah, that's, where we're that's gonna what's go, up. Because I love how one, the homies all got together into some music, and on top of that, y'all it seemed like Backpack Boys uh, started working with you guys a lot closely. Like, yeah, so whether it be with the music, I don't know if it's just music or other endeavors or you guys just talking business but i love seeing you guys getting together like all types all yeah types of i mean one thing i think we could all relate to is that we're all hard workers yeah them with their business us with ours and that's something that we're, where we both met was they probably seen us like just grinding our ass off of what we do and that's what we seen in them they were just they're just go-getters bro they're just Really, you know, work ethic is just work, work, work. And somehow we found a way to intertwine with one another, uh, you know, as far as the music shit. Like, hey, we're going to go do a studio session. Can you come through? We need you to lay a verse down. Yeah, let's go. Boom, boom. Met other people. Um, and it just, it just went back and forth. And then we just got locked in. And I can't damn near rep Backpack Boys. Like, I rep my own name. Like, bro, like, we're so close knit that like everywhere I go you're gonna see backpack boys if you can't feel me if I could wear a backpack boy some I'm gonna wear it just because 
we're just we just got that close with one another. Yeah, they, they, those are the homies right there. Compape, everybody bully Wiz. Uh, just uh, just too much to name, but it's just it's it's a dope. It's a dope. You feel me? Friendship, brotherhood that everybody got is dope. Oh yeah. So, Shout straight. out Backpack Boys. Shout out Backpack Boys. <coughs> For real. We were smoking Backpack Boys all 2021, damn near high 80. For God real. damn. Someone's fucking Backpack Boys. <laughs> yeah, for real. <clears throat> Good things. It's dope seeing like a, a Latino-owned uh, company too, you know, growing in that in this kind of company that, or this kind of industry, you know. There's already two. Yeah. yeah cookies. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Even, cookies yeah, and yeah, this and Backpack exactly. Boys, that's shit. I feel like Latinos run, run that industry, to be honest, bro. Like, for the most part, as far as, far as being in California... That's what, like, I hear a lot there, like, a, like the Latino community, like, the Mexican people have a lot of, like, you know, a lot yeah, to do with yeah, I think Mexicans are just good with plants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, not nah, for real. That's, 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 we get nah, it from our real. grandmas, like, bro. That's what it is, though, for real. Like, for real, I'm glad. Like, 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 uh, no, I mean, it's the planta. Yeah, and they know exactly what to do with it, bro. Yeah. Nah, este, le, le, nah, como es que cortar la quilla aquí. Yeah. Yeah. Corta aquí las orillas. Yeah. Ponle like, piloncillo uh, en la agua. No. <laughs> <laughs> they be like, you need to tie this branch to this yeah. branch. Like, what the fuck? They look the same. Like, nah, watch. Watch how it grows. Watch, watch, it. watch. I be like, bro, what the fuck? That's how you get the OG taste without yeah. having OG. <laughs> it's a hybrid. Yeah. Fucking Tio Lalo comes in <laughs> just fucking takes over the cosecha and shit. <laughs> okay. I bet yeah, you that's yeah. why not to be on no racist shit. We all got gardening grandmothers and parents and shit. I bet. Yeah, for sure. My my pot got a green thumb for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I never oh, been dude. to a Mexican house where there's no roses outside. Right. Chiles like, in like, the back. <laughs> Chiles. Hey, Chiles. Oh, is the one. Chi- oh, the lime tree too. Yeah, the lime, lime, lime tree. Limon or forget it. Or no, limon or orange, for sure. Everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. That's everything. Right. Find everything. That's right. That's right. That's right. But what's uh besides the uh, the red alert project, what's coming up for GB this year? Well, shit, like I said, uh, we're aiming for next month to open up um that sneaker and retail business. What's it it's, called again? It's called a uh, Certified Kicks with a Z at the end. We're on Instagram under Official Certified Kicks. Um, we got the red alert. I j- I've been tapping in with some crazy features once again. People that I grew up listening to or I listened to before I even started rapping. We got some crazy features coming up. Um, I'm trying to drop two more projects after that Red Alert album. So I'm trying to drop an EP and then an album. And um, shit, man, just 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 work. Who knows what's 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 yet to come? You know what I mean? I might I might come up with my own strain. You feel me or something? You know, I don't know. Just Get a boy gelato. What, yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Whatever, whatever God got in store for me. You feel me? I'm so, finna, I'm finna yeah, rock yeah. with it yeah. for sure. I'm excited, bro. I'm excited to see what Same. you got going on for Same, sure. Because I feel like you got that, you got that, that fire in you where <coughs> you're just a, a go getter type of person. You know what I'm saying? Where you just, like you said, whatever comes at you, you're gonna go go full full circle and on for what is it? Like full on with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, off top, off top. That's yeah. Every everything up until this point for me in, in my career has been trial and error. I try some. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I just find something new to do. So I'm a, and it's been working for me. So. I'm going to just keep doing that, trying new things. If they work, they work. If they don't, keep it pushing. Um, and that's it, man. God's been great so far. Yeah. yeah. yeah let's keep doing your thing. You know, everybody here supports 100%. Yeah. yeah. We'll EB, you, EB to the GBs. <laughs> EB yes, to, the, to the BBs. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 We want to appreciate, yeah. appreciate your slime. Nah, I appreciate us. the invite, man. This was yeah, overdue yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Definitely. definitely have another episode. We'll we'll, we'll do some late we'll, night uh, special. Yeah, we'll yeah. come back and fuck around. Do a little fuck around one. Yeah, like or we'll get fucked up at a carne asada or something. We'll do it <laughs> outside <laughs> so we can smoke on these shrooms. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't do drugs. I just uh, drink it's DJ and smoke backpack boys. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally smoke cookies too, man. <laughs> cookies fire too. I don't discriminate. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you, GB. Um, uh, tell them they can find you at where they, where they could get the features at all that shit. You can find me under uh, Ghetto Boy dot official. I don't put a H in the E in, in the ghetto, <laughs> so it's a G E T T O B O Y period official on Instagram. That's all I really got. I need to hop back on my Twitter game, my TikTok <laughs> game. You feel me? <laughs> no, you gotta be like, uh, TikTok going crazy right now. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, 
And that's really it. You can really find me on the streets too, you know, working. And uh, at your local liquor store buying some DJ. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's I said right. I want to see yes. one. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you shout guys. Shout out to for, Barrio, man, for the invite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate sir. you guys for tuning in. Another El Barrio podcast to you guys. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. Yes, sir.